office and took the key. It wasn't me, Uncle Jed. She don't get out the front door. Hurry, Skip. Unlock the door. That's it, Skip. That a boy. <laughs> Come on, Skip. Turn the key. Yeah, you're welcome, Uncle Jeff. But I pretty near lost my leg doing it. She made it to the big tree, Jim. Oh, Jim, 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 Jim. how about shinning up that tree and getting her down? I'd sooner jump into a swamp full of gators. This ain't no time for swimming. I'll get him next. I'm too young to die, Granny. Granny, the boy has been thrown out of that tree a couple of times on his head. <laughs> It ain't just that I got to fight Ellie up there in that treetop. She'll have her bobcat up there to help her. A raccoon and her possum and no telling what all. There goes a the little ape to join her side. <laughs> Son of a gun can hang on with one hand and hit you with three. All oh, right, you big fraidy cat. I'll go get her myself. No, oh, Granny Jethro and me will handle it. You just stick around the bottom of the tree and see that no more critters joins up with her. Come on, Jethro. <laughs> Yeah, boy, put down your hand and run. <laughs> Where's Jethro? I'm gonna beat him up. You ain't gonna beat nothing but a great big batch of biscuit dough. Now you get busy and make your paw a nice pan of hot biscuits. You want hot biscuits, Paul? Well, it ain't that, Ellie. It's just that we figure you ought to be able to bake biscuits for your husband. Well, I ain't got no husband. Well, we're hoping all that'll change. You see, here in Beverly Hills, a girl's got a chance to marry up with a handsome movie star. Yeah, like Tom Mix or Who Gibson. Well, Granny, I hear tell that they got some new ones. Uh, Miss Jane was talking about a fellow named uh, Cary Grant. Grant? I don't think he's any relation. <laughs> now, uh, let me, uh, supposing you was to marry up with Cary Grant and, uh, old Cary looked up from the supper table and he says, uh, Ellie Mae, honey, I'm just a honing and a pining for some hot biscuits to sop up my red-eyed gravy. What would you say to that? I tell him to make his own biscuits the same way he made the gravy, because I can't make that neither. <laughs> Ken, holler her to the stove. I am going to learn her to make hot biscuits and red-eyed gravy before Carrie Grant comes a courting. Grab <laughs> your and get through. For you, Uncle Jim, a fella can take only so much punishment. Billy <laughs> <laughs> May, looks to me like you might be fixing to make biscuits. I reckon so, Paul. Flavor milk biscuits, light as feathers. Did you put in the soda and the bacon powder, Ellie? All oh, there was. All there was, why, that was a two-pound can of bacon powder. <laughs> I don't want to worry nobody about that clump of dough. just took a deep breath. <laughs> He's feeling it, says it's bacon powder. <laughs> Look here, Paul, it's grabbing for you. What do we do, Granny? Well, we got two choices. We can either stay here and fight it or get out and give it to the kitchen. Well, I'd say let's fight. 
do you want to do, Jed? Well, I'm kind of in favor of getting out of here. Well, that gives me the deciding vote. Now, let's see. I kind of think we're going to have to find another way to get Ellie ready for court. Not me! Well, before we do anything, we got to catch her. She's headed right for the Drysdales. Well, come on! Get through! Why, Mr. Carpet, I would be honored to do a favor for you, any favor. It was you who gave me the opportunity to become a couturier. It was you who gave me this magnificent salon. Vous êtes formidable. Vous êtes très généreux. Vous êtes un, un grand gentilhomme. Vous êtes... Euh... Now, Morris, uh, before you say too much, maybe you first better hear the favor I'm asking. Commandez-moi. Well, uh... Hmm? <laughs> Ask me anything. Oh, well, it's about my daughter, Ellie Mae. Ah, Ellie Mae. Très ravissante. Yeah. Well, hmm? <laughs> Your daughter is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Kind of high-spirited, though. Matter of fact, Granny has given up the idea of kitchen breaking her. We figure we're going to have to get her husband city style. City style? Yeah, with well, good looks, uh, polite manners, and pretty clothes. Uh, and you want me to provide the clothes? And the manners, too, I reckon. <laughs> Bring her in. I will begin immediately. You sure uh, I ain't asking too much? My pleasure, Mr. Clampett. All right. Jethro! Granny! Bring her in! <laughs> Just stand back, Morris. She's a mic snappish when she's first unwrapped. <laughs> you sitting on a feather or something? No, so. I'm just thinking about what that dress shop is going to look like when Ellen May gets done bouncing that Frenchman off the wall. She's going to turn that dude every way but loose. <laughs> May don't balk at wearing pretty dresses. She done herself right proud in that style show, didn't she, Granny? Yeah. But I still say we should have hobbled her to the store and learned her to cook. It ain't fitting for a girl to get married if she can't cook. Well, I was talking to Morris about that. He says cooking ain't too important. Especially if Ellie was to marry up with a big movie star like uh, Cary Grant. <laughs> that don't make sense. You mean to tell me if Cary Grant comes home at night after working hard riding and roping and fighting them rustlers that he ain't gonna be hungry? Well, now, uh, Morris says that some of them big movie stars hire folks to do nothing but fix middles. Go on. Full-time hired hand just to cook for him? Are those folks made of money? <laughs> Well, a big star like uh, Cary Grant must make a tolerable living. Hey, Uncle Jed, you know something? I think I'm going to be a movie star instead of a scientist or a brain surgeon. I bet you'd like to have somebody cooking for me full time. What do you think I do? <laughs> well, Jethro, if your cousin Ellie May marries up with Cary Grant, maybe he'll learn you the movie star in trade. Diggity <laughs> dog, I sure hope Ellie gets him, man. Well, don't hold your breath. I still say if Ellie can't cook, no man would look at her twice. <laughs> Exquise. Ravissant. Adorable. No. Une princesse. Are y'all making fun of me? <laughs> oh, mais non, Ellie, mais we were saying that you are beautiful. Ah, oh, c'est belle pour n'importe quel homme. Madame Pauvin will teach you some French, along with other things. You will find it very useful. Oh, avec plaisir. Oh, I have an appointment now with an important new customer, the wife of a bank president. Come, Ellie. I want to see you in a dark wig. I'm sure the effect will be absolutely stunning. <laughs> Don't wait for me, Jenkins. I'll be a long time, I hope. <laughs> Milburn Drysdale. I have an appointment with Maurice. I am Maurice. Oh, this is a thrill. I hear your gowns can make any woman beautiful. In your case, madame, it is you who will make my gown beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne? I better not. The very atmosphere is intoxicating. What I do need, Maurice, is something perfectly exquisite to take my mind off those dreadful hillbillies. Hillbillies? 
I won't bore you with the story. I only wish my husband could operate his bank as you do your salon and exclude undesirable peasants like the Clampets. <laughs> Did you say the Clampets? Oh, don't worry. They'll never come here. They dress in the most outrageous clothing you've ever... Who is she? <laughs> Who, madame? That divine creature who just... There she is again! Uh, she's a customer. But she must be someone famous. Is she a movie star? No, madame. Who then? Tell me. If I did, you would not believe me. Royalty. I should have known. She has that unmistakable regal bearing. Oh, please, Maurice, tell me who she is. I am sorry, Madame Drysdale, but we cannot reveal the identity of the young lady you have just seen. Uh, Pardon, Monsieur. Yes. Telephone. Uh, Excusez-moi, sir. Tell me, she is royalty, isn't she? That lovely young lady. Well, uh, I can truthfully say that I did hear Monsieur Maurice refer to her as a princess. I knew it. This is just too thrilling. <laughs> Chief, Chief, are you sure you're doing the wise thing? Are you kidding? My wife told the chauffeur to wait. She'd hoped she'd be a long time. In this kind of a shop, she can break me. <laughs> but then we notice the striking beauty of this gown, matched by her own striking beauty. <laughs> the motif is classic. The material is velvet, and the design is, of course, original. And the price is, of course, outrageous. Milford, how utterly vulgar. How much is it? Maurice, you see what association with the wrong people has done to him. <laughs> Pardonnez-moi. Certain moment. Milburn, you oaf. Just being here is a privilege. Do you realize who's back in the fitting room this very moment? A princess! Really, a princess? <laughs> Did you say something about a princess? Being fitted in the bath. Isn't it thrilling? Who is she? Maurice refuses to divulge her identity. Probably traveling in Cognito. She didn't fool me. That kind of beauty and bearing has to be royalty. <laughs> there she is. Isn't that thrilling? Isn't that Ellie? Golf. Ellie Golf. That's the word you're looking for, Chief. Right. Ellie Golf. <laughs> Yonder's the Drysdale's and Miss Jane. No, no. Yes, Miss. Oh, here they are. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Drysdale, the princess will think we're tourists. You oaf. Look, you frighten her away. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm sorry. But why can't I just go over and say hi to my friends? Well, they'll think I'm putting on airs. Ellie, Madame Drysdale is how you say, um, comment dit-on en anglais, uh, poseur? Snob. <laughs> oui, snob. Now, if you will listen exactly to what Madame and I tell you, we will teach her a great lesson. Okie dokie. Oh, no, dokie dokie. Certainement, c'est convenu, naturellement. Well, how about... <laughs> Coming to lady, least we can do is bring her some company so she won't get lonesome. I reckon you're right, Jen. Come on, Jethro, hurry up with that company. <laughs> what I want to know is why we can't be Ellie's company instead of these critters. Jethro, if we was to go down there and stand around and watch Ellie studying lady, and she'd get nervous as a cat. Speaking of that, where's your favorite bobcat? Up in the tree, and if she wants it, she can come get it herself. <laughs> yeah, I reckon that'll be enough company. <laughs> Skipper sure does look nice, don't he? Of course he does. He's got on my best tie. Dog, if he don't tie it better than you do. Well, if I had four hands, I could do some fancy tying, too. Fancy! Come <laughs> on, oh, drive on, get through. Milton, you bourgeois banker, how can you just sit there when we may be about to meet royalty? I have tremendous self-control. <laughs> what did you find out? Who is she? Where is she from? Is she really a princess? Can I meet her? Did you speak to her? Drysdale, please. She has agreed to allow you to be presented to her. Oh, marvelous! <laughs> However, her identity must remain a secret. I understand. 
international intrigue and all that sort of and thing. <laughs> she will speak to you only through her interpreter. Oh, I must call a special meeting of my bridge club and tell them of this. Presenting Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. Je vous présente Monsieur et Madame Drysdale. Enchanté. <coughs> Uh, princess, uh, that is Her Highness, uh, staying at Beverly Hills, Lauren. Madame interprétée. Votre Altesse restera-t-elle à Beverly Hills longtemps? Enchantée. <laughs> oui. Yes. Ah! <laughs> Comme Your Highness. That is real quality, the product of generations of breeding and culture. She represents something that mere money cannot buy. I agree. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Staying in Beverly Hills for a while, perhaps we can persuade the princess to appear at our huge party. What huge party? The one we're giving for the princess. Now, Margaret. Well, Hathaway, you're very clever at arranging these things. Do speak to her interpreter. Enchanté. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, but uh, we're looking for my daughter. About your size, haven't she got yellow hair? Well, I'm Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is Ellie May. Child, have you had your head up a stovepipe while your hair is as black as soot? <laughs> oh, no, Granny. This here's a wig. See? Like this. Sure is good to see you. You too, Jethro. Thanks. Oh, good. The entire royal family is here. Mrs. Drysdale would like to give a huge party for Ellie Mae. Mrs. Drysdale? She was mad at us this morning. Yeah, we was chasing Ellie, and we cut across her outdoor card parlor, and she got awful riled at us. Come here throwing things at us. Little sandwiches. They was good, too. <laughs> her attitude has changed. Will you attend the party, Ellie? Well, is the rest of my family invited, too? Mrs. Drysdale would be thrilled at the prospect. <laughs> Excuse me. You see, Ellie, what becoming a lady has already done for you? Yes, sir, Paul. Did you speak to her? Will she accept? The princess will attend your party if her family and retinue are also guests. But of course they're all invited. I'll be honored. <laughs> I shall so inform her highness. Now, Milton. If we are going to entertain the royal family, I insist that those untouchables next door be moved out. <laughs> Margaret, how would you like it if the princess and her entire family and retinue were to occupy the Clampett Mansion? Oh, Milburn, I'd be the happiest woman in the world. No more complaints about the hillbillies? Never. And your mother will stay in Boston? Forever. <laughs> then you have my word on it. Uh. <laughs> is pleased to accept your highness. <laughs> oh, Miss Drysdale, now that you ain't mad at us no more, we can just cut out all this foolishness of bowing and French talk. We're right obliged for the party invite. Hope you have some more of them little sandwiches you were throwing at us. <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Drysdale? You got a stomach ache? <laughs> Reckon she's ailing, all right. <laughs> Oh, now, right. Sorry, Mrs. Drysdale called off that party. Been a good chance for Ellie Mae to meet some fellas. Don't you worry about Ellie Mae. She's gonna get her husband the right way. Baking and cooking. Oh, you gotta stir up biscuits again? No, nope. this time it's my homemade bread. How you doing, Ellie Mae? All right, I reckon. And you put in the yeast, girl? Oh, there was. All there was, why, that was a two-quart crock. <laughs> I best get this outside before it gets out of control. <laughs> Open the door, Ellie Mae. 
<laughs> Best throw the blanket over it, Granny. We don't want to be scraping it off the walls again. <laughs> Now I know what Cousin Pearl used to say to you, Harry May, marry a man that knows how to make... ...way's presentation.